I will kill the waves. Uh, this is Robbie Williams, Joe Williams. Uh, I'm Tim Quant, Heather TK, and John Luke Treadgold. Uh, we're at Tea at the Park with AU Review. We saw you open up the tea break stage earlier today. You know, what was that experience like for you to play this festival? Yeah, um, it was a once in a lifetime experience. Really. Like, I, I, th I don't think we'll ever forget that. First time we've played a festival, we've already, we've already uh, like always dreamed of of playing a festival stage and it, it felt huge. <laughs> felt like we were playing to millions, but I don't think there were quite millions in that tent. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe it broke a hundred or two. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. Like, we just were so into it. I can't even really remember what happened. I'm still like exhausted from it. But yeah. So I guess let us in on the origins of the group. I, I hear Williams twice, so I assume you're brothers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we kind of it's kind of sort of started in sort of drips and drabs. Um, me and Tim met quite a while ago now, probably six, seven six, seven years ago now. Uh, and you know, we found out that we both made music, and we decided that we wanted to do it together. And we kind of sort of accumulated members as we went. Heather arrived first. Um, we were a lot more electronic at that point. And there was myself, well, acoustic electronic, that kind of thing. And Heather played violin. And then my brother joined. He was another guitarist. And then finally we got John Luke who plays the drums. And um, th when John Luke came and started playing the drums, that's when things really changed in terms of how we sounded mm. and in terms of the response that we were getting. So that was the real turning point for the band was when John Luke started playing the drums for us. It's a few years ago now. How many years ago is that? Three years? Yeah, three, three years. <laughs> and how old were you when you joined us? I was about 18, maybe 17. I think he wanted to join us earlier, but he was underage. So. <laughs> <laughs> and now here we are. So we're a few years we're a few years on in the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're playing tea in the park. Now you, you mentioned that the music's gone through a bit of a change since since your origins. Now, how did you find the sound that you've ended up with? There's a lot going on. There's violins. There's some you know Game Boyish MIDI keyboards yeah. kind of going on. You know, how, how did you end up with the with the sound that? Uh, we have today yeah i think uh, we all have a massive range of influences and we all go to see a lot of live shows and to be honest like we just like really absorb things from the bands that we see from the bands that we like and we try to kind of put that in the music so i think that for a time we were making a song where like you could just tell that we had just been to see a certain band because this song sounded like exactly the same <laughs> and we've like from going from that i think we've actually found our own sound that kind of gels all the influences together but i think we'll we'll always change i think we started really acoustic and um like we've finished an album now and and that's kind of one sound and now the new songs that we're making we played one of our new songs today it's much more kind of riff driven and i think like the new sound will have a totally the new album will have a totally new flavor but hopefully still be kill the waves you know <laughs> <laughs> Recognizable. So is, is there an album out? Is there something that we can get our hands on? Yeah, we've got a single out. Um, we've finished an album. We've finished an album with Andy Miller, who produced uh, Mogwai's... Uh, no, he didn't do it. Yeah, it was uh, Hawkeye's Howling. One and one, yeah. yeah, the Hawks Howling. Sons and Daughters. And uh, Sons and Daughters and things. He's produced like some really good records, and he's been he was amazing with us. And we've got a really nice album finished. But we had a few problems with uh, just like labels and stuff along yeah, the way. and. We don't actually have anyone to release it at the minute, so we've got a finished album, but no one can buy it, unfortunately. <laughs> Until you can't, you can't self-release okay. it. You don't want to go down that road. Yeah, we might. We need to get together a bit of money to actually yeah. buy it back from the original investor, and then we can go down the self-releasing route. But I suppose it's kind of as well like we could self-release it. That's an option we thought about, but we kind of think it's a bit better than that, mm. you know. And if we self-release it, we know we know some people will buy it, but we think it's. We think it's good, so we'd like as many people to hear it as, as possible. So, um, yeah, that's the next thing for us is finding a label that wants to put it out and feels about it the same way that we do, you know? I think what Joe's essentially trying to say is that we're all far too lazy to do it ourselves, yeah. so we need someone <laughs> who actually has the skills and talent to do it for us, who could actually do it properly. <laughs> Probably put it out and, like, say on Facebook, hey, our new album's out, and then we'd, like, leave it. <laughs> And then they'll just be like a sad face in a month's time yeah. when it's like, oh, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, well, you did one Facebook post. Of, yeah. um, uh, touring, I mean, are you, are you doing other shows and things or is this it at the moment? 
Yeah, well, we, at the moment we're sort of like we mostly sort of play around Scotland, really. That's where we do. We've not really gone further afield, although we're hoping to at some point. Um, I suppose because over the last few years we've had you know a few different lineup changes. We've had a lot going on in terms of recording singles, recording albums. We've got a bit more time now to kind of think about right where where would we like to play? You know, would we like to go down south? Would we like to go further afield than that? Yeah. So. I suppose along with the album, that's that's something that's sort of next on the agenda, I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's um, it should be an interesting few months ahead. Yeah, it's it's been like it's probably been the best six months we've had as a band. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been the best six months since the start of the year, and so we're, if if the next six months, well, yes, yeah, yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been six, six months since the start of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and those 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 six months have been good. Yeah. And um, well, if the next six months are anything like that, it's it's going to be great. We're really excited about it. Fantastic. And in the meantime, people can check out the single. Can you tell us where we can get that? Yep, you can get the single. If you uh, are the label that we released it on is a label called Comets and Cartwheels. You can get it there off their shop. You can get it off iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on Deezer, Amazon Music. So it's anywhere online that they sell music, it seems to be. So that's good. Uh, you can get it through our Facebook as well. Yeah, you can get it through <laughs> our Facebook. will be released soon. Yeah, yeah, we've done a video for that. So that'll be out soon as well. But yeah, um, we're on Spotify, iTunes, all the usual places. Like What's that. the name of the single? The single's called Better Days. It was, I think it was the second last tune we played today. Yeah. Fantastic. So. Well, guys, really appreciate your time. I wish you the best of luck and um, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Oh, yeah, thanks no, so thanks. Cheers, man. Thanks.